And keep in mind, it's perfectly appropriate and natural to do that. People aren't necessarily supposed to know who they are and what they're going to be doing the rest of their life by the time they graduate from college. Wouldn't that be nice? But it takes sometimes a decade through the 20s or longer to start to explore who am I? What are my talents? What are my interests? And what are my values? We have to necessarily break away for time of the values of our parents. We may reintegrate them. We may say, you know, my parents did have some really good values, and those are mine as well. But we don't want to go through life never even exploring that, examining it. Sometimes we choose other values. We grow up at a different time. But once you know your talents, what you're good at and what you're not very good at, once you know your interests, what, where your heart's calling you, and your values, when those three lines intersect, you're in a much better position to choose the kind of career, the kind of service and calling that will feel right, that you'll wake up happy to go to work on Monday, that fits you. And it can take some time. It did in my case. I w didn't always know I'd be a writer or a speaker or a teacher. So sometimes, as Francis Bacon said, we rise to great heights by a winding staircase as we stumble toward the light. But what I'd like to do now, presuming you have some degree of self-knowledge, but you sometimes come up against a decision that's an important one that you need to make. Maybe you're facing one now. Maybe you have or will. This is a very useful technique called time lining. It incorporates both the right and left brain, both your logic and, also very important, your intuition. And this is what you do. I want to make it as clear as I can. You can write this down if you wish or just listen very closely. It's not complicated. Let's say you're choosing between A and B. Big choice in life. It could be between A, B, and C or A, B, C, D. But for the sake of this, let's just say we have a choice, a fork in the road. You're choosing between A and B. What you do first, you have to feel into this. Enthusiastically embrace choice A, whatever that is for you. Say, of course, how could I have thought anything else? I'm fully committed to A. I'm going to do it. You've got to feel into that as if it's real. Even if you haven't truly made the decision, pretend you have with the full force of your being. Then ask yourself three questions. Having chosen A, what will I look like? What will I feel like? And what will I be doing one hour from now? That shouldn't be too hard. Having chosen A, what will I look like, feel like, and be doing? See what comes up. If you want to do this right, write it down. Just a sentence or two. What will I feel like, look like, and be doing one hour from now? After you've written it down, only takes a minute, then ask yourself the same three questions one day from now. What will I look like, feel like, and be doing one day from now, having chosen A? And then one week, same three questions. One month, one year from now, and 10 years from now. Now you might say, hold on, Dan. How would I possibly know what I'm going to look like, feel like, and be doing 10 years from now, having chosen course A? You may not know, but see what comes up. See what comes up in your imagination. Imagination is the bridge to clairvoyant sight. It calls forth your intuition, because why do you imagine this and not that? So see what comes up. Make it up if you want to, and write it down. Having done that, and that may take all of five minutes total, then say, what was I thinking? Of course I'm not going to do A. B is the clear choice. And you feel into that as well. You're going on path B, and having chosen that, committed to it, ask yourself those same questions. One hour, one day, one week, one month, one year, and 10 years from now. After spending about 10 minutes on this exercise, you're going to have a much better and wiser perspective and feel into that decision than just looking at it with tunnel vision. Should I or shouldn't I? What are the costs and benefits, the pros and cons? This calls forth your intuitive capacities as well. Now, many of us are very much into intuition. We almost reject the logical side of our lives. It's not to be rejected. It's half of our brain. We want to use both logic and intuition, just not at the same time. So many of us have this belief, if I make an intuitive choice, there's something magical about that. If I make an intuitive choice, it's going to guide me on the easiest path. And many of us get superstitious. We think if we make a decision and obstacles fall in our path, it must be the wrong decision. 
That's not necessarily the case. What if you make a deeply intuitive decision and e trees fall in your path, every obstacle, and you struggle? You know, it could still, it doesn't mean it's the wrong choice. It could have been exactly the right choice you needed to strengthen yourself, to learn, and to grow. So there's a higher, there's a higher wisdom here that says every choice leads to wisdom. Every choice eventually leads to wisdom. So in a sense, transcendentally speaking, you can't make a wrong choice. Make the best ones you can. Why make difficult choices when you can go and flow an easier way? Water course way, like water going down a hill. And yet there are times it's useful to do some spiritual weightlifting and to make choices that call forth our fullest power. I'd also recommend in closing that you look at the video modules on self-worth and on taming the mind. This may help as well and flesh out your knowledge and understanding. So I'm Dan Millman wishing you good decisions, good health, good spirit, and good journeys. <laughs>